Hey, I was... Oh. Okay. I'll just go back into the Pleasure Palace. Well, here we are. You got something specific in mind? Because the clock's ticking, honey. What can I... Look who's back. Couldn't stay away, could you? Mm hmm. Hmm. If we'd never taken the paths we did in life. Could we have grown fond of each other? A shame you had to take her life. But you've saved mine, and I won't forget that. Were you trying to be witty or profound? I couldn't tell. Mm. You're just saying what I want to hear. Don't stop. David Hatter is an aspiring screenwriter and hotel manager. He comes in more often than he would admit. Several years now. Poor dear just can't get a break. I overheard him talking about his new screenplay with one of my girls. 
It was about secret societies and creatures that found themselves dealing with inner beasts and persecution by elder monsters. Sound reminiscent of something to you? Yes. The details of his story were too insightful to be coincidental. I think someone's working with David, a kindred who doesn't realize the consequences of their actions. Do you know what the penalty for revealing ourselves to Kine is? Death. I'm afraid poor David's big break. The screenplay he's worked so hard on must be destroyed, and his less-than-silent partner must be... executed. I know David too well. I'm very fond of David, and I'm too close to do what needs to be done. the name of his source out of him. Once you found out who, kill the traitor. But do not touch David. David's such an endearing and creative fellow. If I did this personally, I'm sure he'd never speak to me again. And that would just break my heart. David works at the Lucky Star Motel. He's very passionate about his writing. He loves to talk about his craft. I'm sure he'll talk about his screenplay. It may take some persuasion to get him to give up his collaborator's name, however. After this is over, I promise you'll have my complete attention. For a day? Ooh, I don't get to do women often. Go somewhere more intimate. You lead the way. Okay, honey. Let's see what you've got.
evening. <laughs> Exceptional. Come by in a little while. I should have something for you then. Certainly. There is something, but it involves a gargoyle. Hmm, I can see that's got your attention. It's taken up residence in my beloved Asian theater. It is closed now, but that's beside the point. I sent some people to evict it, and it sent them back with a few less limbs. I can't have that monster attacking kindred in my city. I'm going to forget that, because I still remember impertinence vividly. See, I'm in a position and age where I can have others take care of my nuisances for me. Want to show me up? Deal with that gargoyle. It's a walking block of stone with a taste for blood. I'd suggest whatever method doesn't result in you being eviscerated. In truth, I'd rather have it as an ally, but I doubt it's going to be chatty. Here's the key for the theater. I'll leave it up to you. Certainly. In your lifetime, unwittingly or not, you have seen an Isaac Abrams production. As the financier of 30% of American film's top 100 movies, you must have. Being the Baron of Hollywood, I can do any project I want. Stewart, Lean, Hitchcock, Wilder, Holden, Dean, Scorsese, De Niro, and last but not least, Ash, my child. I remember some studio suit lost in time telling me the only thing they could use Bogart for was to move furniture. Ash, where do I begin? Seven years ago, I saw a casting session for what would become Negative Zero. The moment I set eyes on him, the passion of his performance, I knew he had it. I hadn't seen anything like him since Clift or Dean. He had the looks, the charisma, the lure, that undefinable quality that makes a film legend. My first movie with him made him a sensation. And it also changed him. Once everyone knew who he was, I no longer did. The parties, the drinking, the sports cars, the women. One night when I came to discuss his next role, I found him nearly dead of an overdose. And I couldn't... I couldn't let him go. I... didn't. I acted on impulse. I had seen so many others die before their time, but with Ash, I had a chance to prevent that fate. It devastated Ash. He still wanted to act, but I denied him his place in the limelight. He had to lie to his friends about his new lifestyle. He had to feed. I gave him a club scrap of his former glory. I did everything I could to facilitate the change. He feels obligated to me. I don't think he hates me. Resents me, maybe. I am his sire, and he is my child, and there is a responsibility and respect inherent in that bond, even if we are no longer the friends we were. He spends nearly all of his nights in his club, the asp hole. I am, I admit it, too old-fashioned to appreciate it. To me, it's the compressed essence of everything that's wrong with the film industry today. Certainly. The Nosferatu? I pity them, but I loathe their presence. I deal with them when it's necessary. I know they're beneath my city somewhere, but only they know where. 
They respect my streets, and I keep my politics out of their sewers. But I don't trust them by any stretch of the word. Certainly. You've met VV, have you? Of all the kindred I know, she seems the most alive. She's still young, though, but nonetheless adept. She's not my child, but she's become like a daughter to me. Certainly. Night eating you? I'm David Hatter, the manager here. Did you call earlier? Because I had to give your room away. Apologies. My bad. Oh, wait. Hold on a sec. Okay. Writer's such a tarnished term, you know what I mean? It's like, like every other guy says he's a writer, right? Like, you write a letter, you're a writer, you know? It's like, what I do, that's like, that's screenwriting. Like, I encapsulate the essence of excellent film in my scripts, all right? Like, I'm, a, I'm like a blacksmith with pens, right? I'm a welder of montage. Does a writer write, or does he just, like, ink the flotsam and jetsam floating in his subconscious into a 120-page piece of film genius? But, you, you know, most of my subconscious is filled with old horror films, so that, that's what I write mostly, I guess. Right, right, that's what I'm talking about. There, there hasn't been many good horror films in a long time, and that's, I'm gonna turn that all around. Like, when I bust the stuff I'm working on, it's gonna be like a, a, a revolution in the horror genre, okay? Me? I'm like looking to redefine the vampire movie, okay? Like, Tons of people make vampire flicks, so popular characters, but me, I'm gonna be doing the real deal. Like, not only is it gonna be scary, but it's gonna be like, it's gonna be believable. A good writer always does in this town. Hey, hey, you, you in the business? Cause man, I got tons of ideas for movies, in fact, I should give you one of my completed screenplays. This one's still a work in progress. All right, all right, here.
talked about it. He likes his privacy. Okay, okay, he's a guy, he calls himself Julius, he lives under the pier, in fact, I, I'm supposed to meet him tonight, we talk about vampire film ideas all the time, he, he's a weird, weird guy, but really creative, you know, I, I love how his mind works. <laughs>